two, one, no talking. Shut up and sit down. Good. We are good. Welcome good to Thought Topic. Uh, I'm Isaac Ryan. This episode is going to be about loot boxes and gambling and gaming gambling and so on. And this is our take on it. Um, let's start with some of the culprits. Like, who's doing this? Well, let's start with what a loot crate is first. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Loot crate. Well, yeah, loot crates are the things that came out in Star Wars, which has apparently been fixed. But when it first came so out, not only co- they're- okay, continue. Sorry. So when it first came out, you were able to buy loot crates with real life money and get characters for free. And the rumor was around four thousand dollars to basically buy all of the all of the different characters and stuff on the game or you could spend 58,000 hours playing the game or something ridiculous and get all the skins and stuff that way i don't know what the official figures are haven't looked it up not interested ryan yeah they're not also called they're not also loot crates though they're like um what else they called there's other games they call them other things Oh, you get like treasure chests, ge- you get shit like, like ge- that. You get like gems and star coins and shit like that in mobile games. Well, those aren't necessarily boxes, but there's those those currencies that games make. Um, what the fuck did I was I just trying to say? The special currencies that you have to pay for in games that are technically microtransactions. I lost where the fuck I was talking about completely. <laughs> and they basically make it, make it pay to win. The only exception, in my opinion, to that is the likes of the Overwatch uh, loot boxes, which you just get aesthetically pleasing stuff on your characters, and it's like, once you've got all of them, you're the best. But it realistically, it comes out of your gameplay, you don't actually get any benefits from having all of the skins or all of the voices and so on. Yeah, Des is fucking me up here in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> he's just, I don't mean to swear so much either. I just read what he's saying. But yeah, essentially, they're things you play for for arbitrary virtual currency. You buy them in the game to unlock a random thing. Now, some people call this gambling. Other people say it's not gambling because technically you're always getting a reward, right? Now, here's the fucked up thing, though. I was playing PUBG for the first time. Like I've never, I haven't really played this game before. I was getting these BP points. I don't know what that stands for. We play a game where that means backpack, so we're calling them backpack points. I, I think don't know it's what, what, I, I think it's battle points. But yep, carry on. Battle points. Okay, cool. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so I got these seven hundred battle points. I was able to get a, a crate. I couldn't open the crate though. I had to purchase a key. The fuck is that? Yeah, that's right. You've got to have you've got to have key for certain crates. So, but you can sell those crates that you need a key for. You can sell yeah, those. Yeah, but do you know how many games I had to play a PUBG just to get those first? Yeah, that yeah. first crate. And it doesn't not like it gives you anything extra. It just gives you like you said aesthetic things in that game. I think I'm not sure how far that goes. Yeah, I think the most but aesthetically that's... pleasing one is the mini skirt, and a lot of guys pay big bucks for the mini skirt. I don't know why they want to see. I'll fictional characters that are like literally cartoons running around in miniskirts but they're spending like uh, when that game first came out it was like four hundred dollars four hundred that says something about guys on the internet i saw what they said on on our chat anyway <laughs> <laughs> oh maybe we shouldn't have this chat going what we're trying to do maybe this. we shouldn't um anyway my opinion, as long as it's not pay to win, I don't have a problem with it. If you want to spend four thousand dollars because you want Darth Vader because his lightsaber looks cooler, cool. But yeah, well, but that's if it's, one side of it. There's the people who can't play for fucking tons of hours, so they can pay a little extra to keep up with the people who have, who have tons the time of hours. to put in. Because the people that have time obviously don't have jobs, <laughs> right? As they long have the as time to play that many hours. Yeah, as long as it's not a skill thing, because like. When it comes down to it, if you have better skills, you should be at the top. You shouldn't be able to go, I'm going to pay this much money and I'm going to have all of the best skills and be able to play this game the best. Like for like that's pay to win though. Yeah, there's there's two different kinds of it though. There's there's the models where there's what they what they try to do initially with this. I think is try to give the people who don't have the time to sink every day and night into this shit that 
they can pay a little extra and keep up with their friends. That's how I, th- I believe it started. I don't think it started off as this microtransaction BS that we all have to put up with now and, it's, and just accept now. And it's everywhere. Even games that were like, we're never going to do that and blah, blah, blah. They're, they're all doing it yeah. now. It's, I, yeah, but it's not It's not the game developers. It's it's done at an executive level. It's not done at a level where where the game developers are the ones putting that process in the game. It's a, it's done at an executive level where they want that in there to make more revenue. Yeah, you know what I mean? The they, ga- it's their decision to do that. The owners of the company is going, all right, we need this much profit this month to continue. Otherwise, yeah. we're getting rid of half of our devs. It's a buy. And the yeah, dev, exactly. devs are like, well, shit, we have to implement this or it's our jobs, right? That's I'm imagining that's why. Otherwise, the devs would go, fuck you, boss. We're not doing it. It's going to ruin the game. Yeah. I would imagine. They don't, they don't do it because they, they get a bigger paycheck out they of They get it. a bigger pay rise. They're like, what? You're going to pay me an extra 20000 a year because I'm going to put some microtransaction thing? I, I would waste, I'm going to start coding it now. Let's do it. Yeah. And to be honest, it's it's a very like cutthroat industry. How often do you see a game developer, besides like the big ones nowadays, releasing a good game like like a triple a titled game from a new developer and if you yeah. do how often do you see more than one of those games come out like independent production there's just like barely any independent productions and the ones that do come out usually flop or they make 16 more or their game is so super fucking hyped it comes out not as what anybody expected that they're that they just they have to fold yeah there's it's... tons of games that do that with I, I i can't think of anything right now but there's tons of games where the developer had so much hype behind their game that uh, what was it? It when was, it came uh, out and launched, there was a game that was supposed to be like some RPG. It turned out to be like a Diablo clone. I forget what it was, but it was like so overhyped. It looked so good. But then when they came out, it was basically like a, a Diablo clone, but yeah, in space. But in space. Wait, you're not talking about. Yeah. You're not talking about. Um, oh, I can't even remember the name of the game either. Anyways, but we should talk about why these loot crates are a problem for kids and why they're addictive and why they're an issue, and and what the argument is about them not really being um well if you're not, a- not really not being gambling if you're eighteen and you're buying your own shit and you have your own job and you're spending your own money, go for it. But it's these kids that like mommy and I have five dollars and the parents that are letting them spend this money over and over again. The parents end up in financial strife. There's stories we've heard of their kids spending fucking thousands of dollars over the. I gotta stop swearing. Thousands of dollars on. Um, I'm a culprit. On like I, Xbox <clears throat> Live and stuff. I did you that. You know what I mean? I did, I did that with my grandmother's cell phone. I went and spent like, uh, clocked up like a $500 bill on her cell phone when I was oh, about six my daughter, years old. Yeah, my daughter bought a bunch of stuff on the phone before. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It's crazy. Or and she bought like she bought like levels on Minecraft on Xbox. I was just like, why? Like I told you not to do this. Like she knew what she was doing. Though that's the thing. That's okay. I think the main problem with this is that our credit cards are hooked into like every account that we own. Like myself, Google Play Store, everything. I, I click buy it buy. It doesn't have any authentication anymore. I've taken it off. I'm like, I don't want to know. I know I'm spending this money. I know I, <laughs> I know I shouldn't be spending this money, but I'm a grown ass man and I will spend this money on this stupid yeah. on this stupid little mobile game. I'm gonna do it. I don't know. I, I, I've never been one to buy into those things. So I just stopped like stopped I'm, believing in cell phone games a long time ago when I realized what was going on. I'm playing this game called Idle Heroes. And honestly, I found I found a private server where you get all of the VIP perks for free. So it's like, why, there's no point in playing the real server anymore. I may as well play the private server. Because I get all the VIP perks. Everyone's at the same level. They don't have, no one's like the VIP 13 and somebody else is like VIP 1 where they get all these extra perks and shit, so I can see where they come from. I'm Venezuela, and yeah. I sold my grandmother's... We're going to ignore the comments this, season, this episode. That's what we're going to do. We're going to ignore these comments. <laughs> yeah, we just can't focus on those. It's just right out here. No, not at all. But so, so getting these loot crates, though, is... Here's the argument about it. They say it's not... It's not gambling because you always get something out of the loot crate, but... Technically, it's sort of gambling because sometimes you can get crap and sometimes you can get, like, the best things ever. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is a gamble. So where in the line does that fall? Where's the line? Where does it <clears throat> Where does it right? cut off? Is so it, it gets addicted getting the crates because you're like, oh, the next one will have something good. Okay, not this one. The next one will have something good. Like rolling in that game, that MMORPG, which name will not be spoken. Mm-hmm. Rolling for prey bonuses. Are you talking about No Man I, No Man's Sky is the one you're talking about? No. Really? This wasn't the... Okay. Tibia. 
Oh, right. That yeah. With the looting, with the with the rolls when you're looting. Yeah, you're like, oh, the next roll will give me the monster. Yeah, that I it, to hunt. it got crazy. People started spending so much money in that game. Ridiculous. I was spending ridiculous amount of money in that game. The like thing is, though, is like gambling can, is a serious psychological issue. Like it creates problems with people's brains. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there, there's like you don't just get addicted to one thing. You get addicted to multiple things nine times out of ten. It's not just gambling. You like oh, addicted to spending money now. Addicted to yeah. micro trend. Addicted to microtransactions. You guys watch. There'll be a, there'll be a, a facility oh, somewhere. Definitely <clears throat> people that have that problem. But there'll be a facility somewhere specifically for people with microtransaction problems and, and you'll have to go there and oh, hi my name is isaac and i'm addicted to microtransactions <laughs> yeah like millions of people commit suicide because of a gambling problem every fucking every year because they put themselves in the, they put themselves in the holes so where's the they but they don't understand that they're doing it though that's the messed up part people are like look on the outside and be like oh why can't you just not gamble okay, it's almost the, like yeah. drugs or alcohol it's the same thing there's something in them that 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 that, that feels gratified and they get that gratification instantly from winning, no matter how much they lost. When they win, it's worth it. It doesn't yeah. matter how much they won. They, they lose as long as they won. Lose two thousand dollars, and they're like, "But look, I won four hundred. It's like, yeah, but you had to lose two thousand dollars. There we go. The dopamine. So you're Dad down. You're down sixteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, but they don't. They don't see that when they win. They get the, they get the rush it of is, dopamine it, in their brain. It, but I mean, that's and the that's, same as that's what becomes addictive. Like what he's saying right in the chat there. That 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 feeling becomes addictive. It's like a euphoric feeling when they win. I All that shit that they went through losing, everything that's going wrong does not matter as long as they win that one time. They could win five fucking mm. dollars. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter. And that's what these loot crates prey on. Basically. That reward center in your brain. So what's the suggestion? Limit it to R eighteen. You can't. Don't. Put, How can you do that though? No, don't put loot crates and shit into games that aren't R eighteen. If you if, or or put all loot crate games R eighteen, and then I don't know. It, it's up to the, the parents. The thing is though, they it's already put the those, they already put those ratings on the games, and people kids go play Grand Theft Auto online. Ninety percent of those are twelve year olds. Yeah, ninety percent of the kids on I, there are was, like nine years old to thirteen years old. I was playing San Andreas at 14 or 13, yeah. Yeah. That's very and It's cool. very hard to stop something like gambling because it's it's very sneaky. You know what I mean? Like Gambling's it's, every it's, gambling's everywhere. You you've got to gamble to get your freaking money out of an ATM machine nine times out of ten. You're like, oh, is this my bank? Uh no, it's not my bank. Okay, well I gotta pay two dollars to get my money out now. <laughs> or I've gotta pay fifty cents or whatever it is in different countries. Over here it's like two bucks. You gotta pay two dollars to get your money out of a different ATM. Oh, so, dude, they do that to me too. You take it, you take out of the ATM at the store here, it charges me twice. That's sad. That's so sad. Anyway, and there's look, Des brings up a big point too. A, a big point. A, Des brings up a big point. Get it? <laughs> Des brings up a good point. Gambling plays with ego, also. That the feeling they get of winning makes them feel better than other people a lot of the time. Like it's mm. it's a hard thing to describe. Like I'm not a gambler, so I don't really know, but. But they feel ego. powerful, yeah. They feel like yes, yes it I gives won. them a sense of power yeah. and control, almost. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though they lost everything getting to that point, that win fills them with such <laughs> that they just they need that they need it. <clears throat> this is actually quite on point for me because my my stepfather was uh, was a gambling gambling addict, and he was like, yeah. fierce. He 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 he'd spend money every week. He'd spend all the money that we had uh, on gambling instead of food. And my mum would go and buy food and pay rent and everything with her money and he'd buy cigarettes and and gamble and shit and and then all of a sudden he'd, he'd maybe win like a trifecta on the horses or something and he'd be yeah one thousand dollars it's like yeah but like how much money did you spend so what, what's our suggestion for the games anyway what do, what do you think just remove loot crates completely that's it no loot crates if you get a loot not crate, remove loot maybe, maybe not move, remove loot crates but remove the monetization of the loot crates like the the fact that you have you can pay real dollars to get virtual things should or would, go away would it be would it be more satisfying to change the rng on the loot crate so that you definitely get something that you need if you get a loot crate that would be a way and they could still keep the monetization so that you know you're getting something but, that's going to improve your so, progress regardless. so instead of but you'd have to take away the fact the, the way to buy bulk versions of it you know what i mean so instead of loot crates why don't they just sell the items that they 
drop in the loot crates and have incre- increasing prices on the items. If they're going to do pay to win or pay to get this better skin, why don't well, they Well, they've just, done that too. For the better skin, you have to pay more money. That makes more sense, right? Like, I think Overwatch does it. The cooler the skin or the more elite the skin is, even though it doesn't do anything for you, it costs a little bit more money. And you've got to buy a certain amount of loot crates to get that money. Yeah. They, well, they've done that in other games where you just pay for the items. But then it becomes ridiculous where people are paying like $100,000 for an item in World of Warcraft. Like, that's retarded. Mm, that's insane, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, is it really necessary? I think, like, I think World of Warcraft is probably the only game that's actually tried to put a cap on that. They've, they've changed it, so everything's bind on account or bind on character, so you can't actually trade items to another person. Yeah. As frequently. Well, I, don't, I think you can still craft, but you can still craft and give other players, like, craftable items, but you can't, like, get, like, the best loot drop in the game and then give it to somebody for, like, 50k. Yeah, well, Blizzard is against anybody making money off their games, as we've seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we already know that. Yeah, they, they removed they, they, they removed the, the they removed the marketplace of Diablo three within what six months of Diablo three launching or something like that. I know, yeah. I know, because I didn't have the time to play it at the time when it launched. So I was like, I'm just gonna buy some gear and go and smash some fucking monsters, right? Yeah, that's what you thought was gonna happen. Well, I did do that, and then they destroyed the marketplace, and now I have to grind to crap for my gear. That's horrible. Um, anyway, <laughs> I think uh, I think that's all we have time for today. So, um, are you serious? Mm. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. Oh, all right. All right. Do part two. Part two. Bye. <laughs>